Roland is known as a legendary contestant in wilderness survival competitions. The winner of season six, Jordan, may not match him, but his achievements are equally impressive. Jordan can shoot a 700 kilogram moose with an arrow and fell a wolf five times his weight with an ax. Whether ice fishing or setting gill nets, he always nets results. Compared to Roland's lengthy championship run, Jordan's journey is more compact. Jordan hails from Virginia, USA. Growing up on a farm, he is used to solitude. He spent five years in Siberia, living with the local reindeer herders, and acquired essential survival skills. Jordan believes in his strength to at least make the top three, even if he cannot win the championship. On the sixth day, Jordan first appeared making a lean-to shelter and crafting a birch bark horn that mimics the mating call of a female moose. Earlier, he had set several wire snares supported by sticks along animal trails and had high hopes for these traps. Jordan did not gain weight on purpose for the competition, knowing that if it came down to starving, he couldn't last as long as others. His only chance was to actively secure food. However, after scouting around, he found the area near his camp was green, but a large surrounding area had been scorched by wildfire, causing massive animal fatalities. Although the show's location choice has its pros and cons, this was hard to accept. Unexpectedly, within three days, Jordan's traps caught four rabbits, changing his perspective on the resources in his area. These rabbits provided at least four days' worth of food. In his shelter, Jordan skinned and gutted them, using parts he usually wouldn't eat, like the heads and offal for soup, aiming to not waste anything. The taste might not be great, but the meal was nutritionally needed. That evening, a bull moose approached outside his shelter. Jordan thought about grabbing his bow to hunt it, but realized that by the time he got out of his sleeping bag and dressed, the moose would likely have fled upon hearing him. Although rabbits provide protein, their fat content is sadly minimal, whereas moose fat is abundant. Jordan found the moose's tracks leading to a weedy area just 70 to 80 meters from his shelter. Delighted to be closer to the moose, he prepared an early warning system hanging cans on a paracord that would clank if the moose stumbled into it. Using the birch bark horn, he mimicked the call of a female moose in heat every few minutes. At 5.30 p.m., his alarm system sounded. Oh, crap. My early warning system. Thinking it was perhaps a black bear, Jordan sneaked out in thermal pants, bow at the ready. It turned out to be a large antlered moose, Hidden behind bushes, he drew and released an arrow, which unfortunately landed between the animal's legs. Caught off guard and rushed, he had only brought one arrow and missed his chance for a follow-up shot. The rabbits he had previously caught were already eaten. Jordan stood by the lake fishing for a long time without any luck. Now, feeling very hungry, he thought about setting traps for hunting, which he found more satisfying. He wondered whether the rabbits had been depleted or if the scent had given away his intentions, as his traps remained untouched. With nothing else to do, he decided to build a fence to guide the moose into a muddy ambush spot. Jordan had some techniques for chopping trees. First, he would soften the fibers on the back with an axe, then chop diagonally. Trees as thick as an arm could be felled in one stroke. He used these trees to create a fence, which moose would not usually jump over, but would instead be guided toward the mud where they would trip a rope. On the 20th day, Jordan's situation was still tough with no triggered wire traps. Just as he thought about changing locations, he was energized by the sight of a moose at the edge of the forest. He quickly shot an arrow and confirmed he had hit the moose after observing carefully. Following the blood bubbles on the ground, indicating a lung injury, he found the dying moose standing still, seemingly waiting for death. He cautiously refrained from shooting immediately to avoid startling the moose or causing it to charge in a final struggle. Jordan waited beside it from 9 a.m. until noon, when the moose finally collapsed. The moose weighed about 800 pounds, and butchering it was challenging with only a small knife. Even experienced hunters with proper tools take two hours to complete such a task. Jordan proceeded slowly, first removing the hide and the innards to cool down the carcass, then dismembering the limbs and other parts. Fortunately, the hunt was completed by noon, giving him ample time to process the body, which he continued until 10 p.m. before packing all the meat back to camp. With many predators in the forest, Jordan hung part of the meat in a tree, built a raised triangular platform to keep another part off the ground, 
and transformed his shelter into a smokehouse for the rest. Given the current temperatures, the meat would spoil in five days if unprocessed. Jordan worked against time to smoke each piece of meat for preservation. By 4 p.m., the first batch of meat had a smoky sheen, extending its shelf life. To protect his gains, Jordan decided to sleep beneath the meat. That night, he covered the meat outside with branches and stayed half awake, ready to chase away any thieves. This moose entirely changed his situation. The crispy exterior was delicious, and in the following days, Jordan turned into a mukbang star, eating roasted moose meat and performing for the camera. However, this comfortable period did not last long. The next morning, on the way to the food storage, he noticed many footprints and recognized them as those of a wolverine, a relentless hunter that can prey on animals and plants under the snow. Fortunately, the moose meat was unharmed, and Jordan thought it would be safe left as it was. After dark, Jordan couldn't fall asleep and the wolverine visited again. He heard noises but rushed out without his bow and arrow, only to watch the wolverine slip away. Jordan thought his scare would keep it away for the night, but the next day he was shocked to find it had eaten all the fat stored in jars. Losing a few pounds of meat was one thing, but fat was crucial for maintaining weight. Without enough, even with hundreds of pounds of meat, he would starve and possibly have to leave the competition. Angry at the Wolverine's actions, Jordan decided to set up tripwires around the food storage with cans hanging on them, positioned just high enough for the Wolverine to trigger. That night, Jordan stayed by the fire, listening for disturbances. As expected, the wolverine returned. But this time it triggered the tripwire, revealing its presence. Jordan grabbed his bow and arrow and disappeared in front of the camera. The wolverine's roar followed. Jordan returned with an axe, muttering that he'd nailed it to the ground. A few axe chops later, the Wolverine was silenced. The fight ended quickly, and Jordan successfully killed the Wolverine that had stolen his moose fat. Its body was mostly muscle with little fat, hardly compensating for the lost moose fat, but it eliminated a potential threat. To prevent further incidents, Jordan decided to build a more secure food storage. He chose four nearby trees, cleared their lower branches, and built a standing platform in the middle to facilitate sawing off unnecessary trunks. He then constructed a solid wood floor on top to store the deer meat and made a ladder for easy access. He removed some bark to make it harder for animals to climb, streamlining his operations. On day 45, medical personnel examined Jordan. Although there were no major issues, he had lost 30 pounds in the last month due to insufficient fat intake. Continuing this way, even surrounded by hundreds of pounds of moose meat, he might still have to leave the competition due to physical reasons. Jordan immediately cooked a pot of fatty deer meat. After eating, he went fishing by the lake. Previously, he disliked standing idly, but now he needed to find a way to get fat from fish to maintain his weight. After a long, uneventful wait, a fish finally tugged the line. He quickly reeled it in, almost pulling it to shore, but at the last moment, it escaped with the bait. It was a three-pound fish, enough to meet his fat needs for four days. Frustrated, Jordan felt like cursing, no more fish bit after that, and he couldn't understand how he could hunt a moose yet still potentially starve. Fishing was his weak spot, and he was unsure what to do next. Jordan thought the deer head could be useful and planned to scrape all the fat from it, especially the fatty tongue. He exerted much effort to cut it off whole. He believed this large piece of meat would not disappoint. Jordan cut the deer tongue into small pieces, mixed it with other fats, and heated it in a pot. After five minutes, he had rendered all the oil. He didn't waste the oil residue either, packing it into a tin can as a snack. He used a piece of birch bark as a funnel and carefully poured the oil into another can. Half a month had passed since he last killed a wolf. Today, as Jordan climbed the ladder to check the food, he noticed bite marks on the meat and some of the fat was missing. Footprints around the area told him another wolf had visited. With his previous experience, this time he tied steel wires around each of the four posts. If a wolverine climbed up, it could get its arms and legs caught. He also set up trip wires between the posts with cans hanging on them and more cans near his bed for a better alarm effect. Living alone for a while, Jordan began to miss his family. This feeling was not conducive to winning the championship. To pass the time and make the days go faster, he used birch bark as material and carved numbers on it with a knife, making himself a set of playing cards. 
He stayed indoors and played solitaire, which was actually quite a good way to pass the time. By day 63, the lake at the contestant's location had frozen over with a thick layer of ice. Jordan had new plans for the future. He carved a shuttle from birch wood and started weaving a fishing net outside his shelter, using parachute cord. Netting was a tedious and monotonous task, and the low outdoor temperatures affected his dexterity. It took him two days to complete the net, which he weighted with elk meat. This morning, he also made a pair of snowshoes. Now fully prepared, Jordan wore the snowshoes to the deep part of the lake. He wielded an axe and energetically broke the ice, taking 20 minutes to open two holes. He inserted a stick connected to the net into one hole and pulled it out from the other, then dragged the net underwater by pulling the rope. He piled snow around both holes because the high air content in snow greatly reduces heat transfer, making it less likely to freeze. After waiting three days, Jordan once again walked onto the ice to check the net, hoping not to return empty-handed again. As it turned out, fortune favored him this time. He caught a large fish, which froze as soon as it emerged from the water. This lake fish could provide about three days' worth of fat. Jordan eagerly sliced open the fish's belly on the ice and enjoyed the fresh and satisfying sashimi of fish intestines. The appearance of this fish changed the situation of surviving without fat intake and reinforced his confidence in winning the championship. On day 70, Jordan cheerfully went to get some meat for breakfast, but the least expected event still happened. Yesterday, he forgot to remove the ladder. Early in the morning, he saw the ground covered with branches that had fallen from the food storage area. Jordan exclaimed that this was a disaster. Climbing up, he saw that the little fat left on the moose meat had been completely gnawed away. What upset him the most was the fish, the one he hadn't even allowed himself to eat, had its fattiest parts, the skin and belly, completely devoured by a wolverine. Surviving longer without fat was not possible. Jordan had no other solution but to rely on the fish in the lake. He chiseled open the hole with the gill net, shone a flashlight into the water to attract plankton, and thus lure the fish. Unfortunately, the flashlight's bright light was limited, and after much effort, he caught nothing. That night, he tossed and turned in his shelter, unable to sleep. Wolverines had stolen at least 15 pounds of his fat, a loss of over 60,000 calories. Now, with fishing also going poorly, he doubted whether his body weight could last until the end. On day 77, Jordan went ice fishing on the lake, with little hope, but this time he was not empty-handed. He caught a dogfish weighing three to four pounds, its belly plump with fat. Jordan took a selfie with the fish against his back for the camera. Today was the day the crew conducted their medical checkup. Back at the shelter, he immediately stewed the fish, not planning to save it like before. The medical team's helicopter had already landed. Jordan was still leisurely stuffing fish into his mouth, determined to boost his energy levels, worried he might fail the medical checkup and be eliminated. When asked how he felt, he told the others that although he was thin, he was still very strong and healthier than anyone else here. As he recited the lines he had prepared to prove his strength, his wife Janalee approached from behind. Four days ago, the last competing contestant, Varnia, had withdrawn. Jordan became the winner of this season's $500,000 prize.